YouTube is it going? The Goat House is back. Today we're ranking every starting right tackle heading into the 2022 NFL season. Yesterday we did the left tackles, all 32. Left tackle is definitely a little stronger than the right. You know, a little little bit of a mess going on at the bottom of these uh, right ta starting right tackles here. Maybe the weak spot of some of these teams. Uh, we're going to rank them 32 to 1. We did this for... Every offensive position group but the interior offensive lineman, that'll be next. Then we'll be on the defensive position. So excited about all these rankings, excited about the season. So join us, like, subscribe, turn notifications on, follow us on Twitter. Super followers are getting extra uh, rankings as these ranking videos come out. A lot more exclusive content on the way. Uh, at Goros NFL, link down below for that. Here's our Twitter. Uh, keeping you guys up to date. You guys are kind of playing along with these rankings as well. So it's a good reason to follow our Twitter, and again, the super followers of Twitter are getting some bonus content. But uh, yeah, top 32 are the 32 starting right tackles. Had to predict with a lot of these. A lot of these are up in the air on who will actually start, uh, and this is predicting the upcoming season. So the Seahawks, I, I'm predicting, will have a rookie, uh, Abraham Lucas from Washington State, starting, uh, and I think he's got a bright future. He's got a lot of upside. I like the pick. I like the draft pick there. Um, it's just tough if a third-round rookie has to come in there and play at the right tackle position when they may have an inexperienced quarterback in at quarterback as well. Um, so Lucas comes in at 32. Again, he could have a bright future, could have some struggles right away. Chargers, this is definitely their weakest spot of their uh, very talented roster. And it's very much up in the air on who will start at right tackle because, uh, you know, maybe most people would predict Storm Norton, who did struggle quite a bit last year. Uh, you know, last year and last year they drafted uh, Brennan Yames from Nebraska. Maybe they like him at guard a little better. I, I thought I like the upside at right tackle, but he's most likely a guard for them. Uh, you know, they they draft John Marie Sawyer, who I project as a guard, but he played a lot of tackle both sides with that Georgia s scheme. Uh, kind of had the same role as uh, Andrew Thomas back when he was there when they played him at left, played him at right. Um, you know, a lot of run blocking duties there. So, but Sawyer could start at right tackle. Uh, I would not be against that, but I'm going to predict they go Trey Pipkins. Um, I, I believe they had, had him kind of stick around because of his upside. He does have that upside, uh, but uh, yeah, could struggle a little bit. They may be switching off. Maybe maybe their starting right tackle isn't on the roster right now. There's a lot of free agents out there, so that could be uh, that could definitely be the case. So I think they'll go Pipkins the way it sits. Got him at 31. Uh, Bears, right tackle, also up in the air. Uh, all four of these uh, so far are up in the air. Uh, Tevin Jenkins, who was one of their top picks last year, was a very good prospect, uh, got in some playing time after coming off that back injury last year. And there were some okay moments. There's a lot of penalties. Real messy with the penalties. And I knew you get a new coaching staff in there, so that definitely helps. Maybe the discipline there. Uh, does he play left? Does he play right? I think from what it sounds like, they like Borum at left. They also have Braxton Jones for left. I think Jenkins' best opportunity is right, or right tackle or guard. But he was such a good tackle at Oklahoma State. Uh, but he is better as a run blocker, so that could make sense for guard. Uh, but I think they'll roll. It's a very up in the air. I think they'll roll with him at right tackle to start the year. Hopefully he can cut down those penalties. He has a lot of upside. You know, I'm going to trust him a little bit more, even though we haven't seen him a lot. He has a back injury, has the penalties. Uh, he's Maybe he's the out of position. I still trust him a little more than a couple of the other guys we talked about. Leatherwood at 29, kind of in the same boat. Uh, it's pretty solid pro as Jenkins. Pretty solid prospect from last year. Uh, I actually graded him as a guard. Uh, the Raiders took him as a tackle, and they actually moved him to guard, and he looked a little bit better there. Uh, but I'm predicting the new staff to put him back at tackle. It's really up in the air. They have a number of guys that can fill out that right tackle spot, just like you know the Bears or some of these other teams here. So it is it is really up in the air. Brandon Parker, does he stay at guard? Because he's been bouncing around tackle and guards. All about what this new staff thinks. Uh, you know, so there's a number of guys. Uh, you know, good. He's been a right tackle and, and a guard as well. You know, so there's just it's, Raiders are very interesting on who they play where. We know they're set uh, in, in quite a few other spots in the offensive line, including left tackle Colt Miller, who ranked pretty high in the left tackle rankings. But very curious to see what the Raiders do, like these other teams. But um, I think they'll put Leatherwood at right tackle. Uh, but it, there's some competition, like how they'll in practice and training camp and how they play here and there will determine uh, where they play. So the Raiders, I really don't think they even know yet here. Uh, next group of guys here, Liam Eichenberg at 28. Another one of those second-year guys, a lot of upside. 
did struggle a little bit last year. The Dolphins were having guys in and out, switching spots, you know, so it was a little tough. New coaching staff that will work a lot better at this offensive line. You also add uh, Teron Armstead for the left tackle spot, uh, and you add Connor Williams for guard, so that kind of makes the unit stronger, so which could help Eichenberg take that step up. Caleb McGarry, who I wasn't really high on uh, coming out of college, and, yeah, he has not worked out for the Falcons so far, but, you know, He's had some injuries here and there, so if you if you see him stay healthy, maybe he can take that step up this year. Uh, Chukwuma Okafor at 26, going to be their right sealer's right tackle. Yeah, better suited for right tackle. Kind of been a little inconsistent. You know, it was kind of surprised the sealer's gave him that contract, but they like his upside at right tackle. He comes in at 26. Uh, Dylan Radens uh, of the Titans, which this one's a little tricky too because do the Titans like him at tackle? They like him at guard. He filled in for both last year. Um, he filled in for Taylor Lewan at left tackle. I take a look at that. Actually, pictured is that Niners game, which is a tough task, and I thought he did a pretty good job. So I like him at tackle. I hope they start him at right tackle. A little bit different than what he was doing last year. They're a little iffy on where they play him. So not a whole lot of not a whole lot of confidence. But again, I like the way he played when we. Saw him last year. He comes in at 25. Maybe another one, another one of those guys with a bright future, but maybe some growing pains like a lot of these other guys we've talked about. Uh, 24, Lucas Nyang, which um, could this could be this could be a couple of different guys really for the Chiefs. Uh, you know, it could be Wiley, it could be uh, Kennard, who they draft from Kentucky, who played right tackle, but does fit maybe better as a guard. So maybe a little bit of a competition there. I think they like Nyang. Uh, but he has that injury concern, obviously. It's a really good unit in there, so maybe that can help him play a little bit better. Just got to stay on the field. But, again, this could be a number of guys, but I'm a little more confident with the Chiefs guy, whoever it may be, than maybe some of those other teams we talked about uh, because that unit is so damn strong. Juwan Taylor hasn't really worked out like I thought he would so far. I really liked him out of Florida. But new staff in there, offensive line maybe looking a little stronger. That could help him. So maybe this could be a breakout year for Juwan Taylor here for, for the, the Jaguars. Samuel Cosme was pretty solid when we saw him uh, earlier last year, so we kind of continue off with that. In other words, a lot of young guys here that are second-year guys that should be getting the nod here. Um, you know, could be some growing pains here and there. Tyus Howard is a tough one to rank. Uh, the Texans projected right tackle because uh, he's actually played more guard than tackle. Uh, you know, since he's been in there, and he's kind of struggled. He's kind of struggled when he's when he's been in. Uh, but the late last year, the Texans. Had him play that right tackle, which I graded him as a tackle. I thought he should have been playing tackle the whole time. Uh, and he looked pretty damn good. It's a very small sample size, though. Very small sample size. Four games. Uh, you know, so that, it's a tough one to rank. You know, some some promise there. Some promise. So hope, hopefully Tyus Howard stays healthy. Hopefully he sticks at that right tackle position. That would be great. And it looks like that. They draft Kenyon Green, who also can play tackle. But he's going to be a very good guard. Uh, should be a good guard, so it, it makes it kind of makes sense. It looks like that's what that's where they're gearing towards here, uh, how they use their offensive linemen the correct way, uh, which they really haven't been doing for some time there. Uh, on to the top twenty, Calvin Beecham uh, at number twenty, and we actually had both tackles. The Cardinals rank at twenty, uh, so he comes in at twenty there. Yeah, a little. I the Cardinals offensive line played okay to start last year and it kind of went downhill a little bit it kind of felt like that the last two years I do think some injuries and shuffling guys around felt like when Hudson the center was was missing that was kind of what created a problem it shows how good he is uh 19 Terrence Steele of the Cowboys who who got some reps in last year and the Cowboys obviously thought they saw enough from him to move on from Leo Collins mainly was to save money Steele was a little inconsistent though there was some there was some moments where it's like, all right, you know, maybe this guy could be the starter, and there was some pretty bad moments. Some t we're used to the Cowboys' offensive line keeping Dak very protected, and there was a lot of times where uh, you know he was getting hit or rushed early on, and there was a little some sloppy moments for Steele. Does have some upside as maybe the full time guy now. Morgan Moses at 18, uh, he finds his way to the Ravens now this year, uh, you know, and I believe he'll start Week One at right tackle. And we kind of know what we're going to get from him, kind of middle of the pack here. Billy Turner, kind of the same thing. Kind of know what we're going to get from him. I think that was a good sign for the Broncos because that was kind of the only opening on their team. Billy Turner has that, uh, that's, that uh, starting experience, and it felt like he wasn't great for the Packers, but it felt like when he was out, they, they really, really needed him. They missed him. So uh, Billy Turner was a pretty solid, low-risk pickup for the Broncos there. You know, same Turner and Moses were, were kind of in the same boat. Uh, 
on where they rank, what type of tackles they are, how they've been playing, pretty good pickups. Uh, Moses actually got a multi-year deal, which was a little surprising, but we'll see how that works out for the Ravens out of the top 16. I put Spencer Brown at number 16, which is a little bit of a surprise. I don't think we could have predicted him to be here, uh, you know, a year ago, you know, second year guy. Uh, very impressive when he stepped in there for the, for the, for the bills, I should say last year. Um, and yeah, they kind of, Solid, he's kind of solidified himself. The, the, the Bills' offense line kind of solidified themselves on who goes where, uh, you know, moving forward. They really got things together late last year into the playoffs. I mean, a big difference from early last year, too. I mean, Josh Allen was getting rushed like crazy, and then he was felt like he had all day going down the stretch into the playoffs, even in the final playoff game. So, uh, yeah, some promise here for Brown, which may be a little bit surprising. But Kai Becton uh, of the Jets. Another one that's kind of tough to rank because we didn't see him last year. Year before, we saw him play pretty damn well at left tackle. Now he's going to play right tackle because Fant played pretty well at left. Uh, but Becton's talented enough, has that upside that I think he'll be a top 15 right tackle right off the gate here, right out the gate here. Uh, Mike McGlinchey at 14. He's been a little inconsistent. You know, there's been some moments where he looks like, yeah, he's could be one of the better right tackles in football. And there's some, you know, some rough moments. Had the injury as well. Uh, but he comes in at 14. Uh, needs to say a little more consistent. Rob Havenstein of the Rams comes in at 13. That's back-to-back -back tackles of the Rams being ranked 13, actually. So Havenstein has been pretty consistent compared to the start of his career. He comes in at, at number 13. Uh, top 12. 12, I got Trent Brown. A little tricky, too, because it sounded like the Patriots are trying to, you know, can he work out at left tackle? Because Isaiah Wynn's been their left tackle. Brown, since last year, been their right tackle. When Brown plays, injuries, a legitimate concern. He's very, very good. If he's fully healthy, he's better than number 12. But again, he could be playing left tackle. It's kind of hard to see for me, but it sounds like that. It, it could be the case. Uh, but I, I, for some reason, I think they kind of roll in uh, still with week one with the same thing they had last year. I, I definitely could be wrong on this one. Um, but it's a little tricky because, uh, yeah, well, what they're tinkering with, I suppose. Uh, but Brown, very talented. Again, just has to stay healthy. He comes in at 12. Jack Conklin uh, needs to stay healthy. He was just, it was just um, just unlucky last year. I mean, now it does feel like it's there's some injury concern for sure, but just very unlucky uh, with the injuries that kind of when he came back, you know, another one, you know, it just kind of kept happening there. But very talented. Um, he actually surprised me two years ago. I didn't think he was going to be that good because ten for Tennessee he was a very good run blocker. Pass protection was a little, a little rough, but he really stepped up the Browns two years ago. Will he be the same, though? Will he be that top 10 guy? That's kind of the question. Leo Collins at 10. Another one of those guys that, you know, he could be – he could be in that top tier. He can be the elite group of the right tackles. He needs to stay healthy. He needs to stay on the field. Cowboys were so good with developing those offensive linemen, coaching up those offensive linemen, kind of making them look better. Uh, you know, so that's the thing as well. The Bengals have they've got a, this was a big time signing, a plus plus signing. Uh, very fortunate the Cowboys got rid of him. He's going to help the Bengals. He's going to be good, but is he going to be as good? And the Bengals are a better team than the Cowboys, but is he going to be as good? The Cowboys offensive line, the Bengals offensive line. I think close enough, but maybe not fully confident with him being as good, but it, pretty damn close. And I got a rookie at number nine. Again, this is a good time to remind you that I'm predicting the upcoming season. Evan Neal uh, is a stud. I know he's going from left to right tackle, but he also played right in the past. Uh, this was a better prospect to me just based on my prospect grades. And I was very, very high on Rashawn Slater, who was a left tackle with the Chargers. But a better prospect, prospect grade-wise, Evan Neal over Slater. And Penny Sewell, again, I was super high on Slater. So that And look where those guys, what they did in their rookie years and where we view them now. Now, factoring Evan Neal and how good he's supposed to be, I think it's very realistic that he can be a top 10 right tackle right out the gate here. Uh, very talented uh, very very smart tackle, very smart tackle for sure. Understands uh, switches, picking up blitzes better in the pa in passing game, better than I've ever seen as a prospect. So uh, Andrew Thomas Evan Neal looks like a pretty good duo for the future there for the Giants. Finally, they got a pretty good tackle group there. Um, so yeah, predicting Evan Neal to be a top. I don't think that's that bold. And the prospect that he was, uh, that he is. Uh, and the somewhat shortage on right tackles. Uh, I don't think that's that bold, really. Uh, a reminder, we have super follows available now on Twitter where you get exclusive bonus content. I've been doing extra rankings with all these ranking videos. So since we did left and right separate here on YouTube, the super followers, I'm going to combine them and give you the 16 or so best 
of them. So we've been doing that for every uh, position group. Also had some trade scenarios. A lot more coming, especially during the season. We're on the top eight. Penny Sewell, we were just talking about him a second ago. Uh, as second year, already into the top eight. Uh, and he's just kind of just getting going as a right tackle. Because remember, he was always a left tackle at Oregon. And we knew he was a sure thing top prospect the second he stepped on the field uh, in Oregon. Kind of like kind of like Herbert the second he played as a freshman. You know, some of those Oregon guys. Uh, but Sewell, yeah, should continue to get better. And early on, it was like... You know, early on it was like kind of you know kind of questionable. I think preseason as well, and it's like ah, do we, is he going to work at right tackle? Is he going to struggle? We move him back to left, and then he got used to it, and he kind of got going more and more. Got a lot better down the stretch of the season. So I already like him in the top eight with some of these big boys up here. Brain Smith at seven, a uh, very talented right tackle. Uh, you know, once was thought of going to be a guard, and he worried a lot of those guys just don't really work out because they kind of got in their mind that, you know, this guy's going to be a guard, and he works out so well at right tackle. The Colts obviously saw him at right tackle. Uh, maybe he didn't play quite as good as I thought. Maybe he could have elite year last year. Didn't have quite that. Comes in at seven. Uh, the Packers, Elgin Jenkins at six. This is a tough one to rank, too, because – he might not even be. This is. It's weird seeing a guy ranked this high that it's not even a hundred percent guarantee that he'll be starting at right tackle. It's usually those guys are kind of towards the bottom. Uh, but he's played all over the place. He's he's one of the more overall talented offensive linemen in football because he can play all over the offensive line, all at a high level. I do think he's probably best at guard. Uh, but I'm confident with him at right tackle, and I do believe they will start. I'm predicting they will start him at right tackle. Uh, you know because it seems like they have some. More if you know you take Elton Jenkins out of the picture, where do they have more starting caliber guys week one? I'm gonna say guard with Elton Jenkins out of the picture, tackle or guard. That's the way I look at it. You know, so I think they're maybe more depth at guard. It did draft pretty well uh, at both positions. They drafted a couple guys that are like maybe like Elton Jenkins. You know, are they tackles? Are they guard? Where do they prefer them? They play both. That's great. You know, so uh, I think he starts at right tackle. Uh, he's super talented. Again, maybe he's a little better at guard than he is tackle, but he's just super talented and he'll be fine at tackle. Hopefully he stays healthy. Special talent. Taylor Moten at number five and a consistent good young right tackle and he was kind of known as a raw prospect coming out too. Like yeah he could be something it might take quite a bit of time and it didn't really take as much time as we thought so uh, the Panthers right tackle comes in at five and he got some help there. They had a left tackle and a Kemik Wanu uh, which was great for them. Uh, we're on to the top four. Brian O'Neill comes in at four. Him and Moten were kind of in the same boat kind of back and forth. Brian O'Neill has been so good for the Vikings. They've had some Offensive lines that struggled, too. They stepped up last year, but O'Neal's been so consistent, not really giving up any pressures, any sacks, uh, and so dominant in the run-blocking game. You see him kind of get those next-level spots down the field. Uh, so he comes in at four. The top three, I think, kind of were clear. Like, these were going to be the top three uh, between Tristan Wirfs, Lane Johnson, Ryan Ramchek. Uh, I went with Wirfs at one because he's arguably been the best and he still has more upside, I'd say. I think Ramchek still has some upside, but uh, I think he also has the most upside, so I felt pretty good about putting Wirfs at number one. Lane Johnson and Ramchek, pretty, pretty interchangeable. I love that Lane Johnson, the way he stayed healthy and played the way he played, I should say, last year because it was that Lane Johnson that we're, we got used to for a bit, you know, and then... Uh, Eagles unit so strong, so that definitely helps his case. It's so strong, so that helps his case as well to play as good as he can play. So I want Lane Johnson too. Ryan Ramchek at three, who's been fantastic, uh, even right out the gate his rookie year, he was great. So uh, those top three guys, I, I think that probably would be everyone's top three. And not saying that order, but those three guys there. So uh, yeah, there's some really good right tackles. There's not a lot of them, you know, compared to the left tackles. There's some really good left tackles. Uh, you, you know, but there's some stud right tackles. There's not a whole long list of them. And we got second year guys way up in the list. You got a, I got a rookie up there. So there's a lot of question marks on who will start where from some teams. Uh, so I cannot wait to see, uh, who teams put out there, uh, week one. Very curious on that. But if you missed the left tackle rankings, those are already up on the channel. Uh, a lot of talk on Twitter, super followers getting those extra rankings and more and more to come there. So, uh, and then full NFL coverage here. So join us, like, subscribe to Notifications on. Much, much appreciated if you do that. But that is going to do it for this one. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.